Welcome to Centre Court. Thanks to TAC, how safe is your car? We have a big edition of Centre Court coming up for you today. Of course, Ash Brazel is joining me in the studio again. Thanks, Braz, for joining me. Have you recovered from your game on the weekend? I have, V. Um, excited to be back in Melbourne. The body is a little bit sore, but excited for this weekend. Well, we've got plenty of netball to talk today, but we also have two very special guests coming up, and we're super excited to have the new Netball Australia CEO here in the studio with us. She will be joining us very soon, Kelly Ryan. And then also later on the show, it is NAIDOC week, but one of the only, one of two Indigenous players to play for Australia and the Diamonds is Sharon Finn and White, and she will be joining us because she's got a very exciting project that she is working on and I can't wait to hear more about it. But one thing we do need to touch on, Braz, is that we said at the start or at the end of uh, last show that we we're going to put a poll up on our social media. So on Twitter at Centre Court Show, hashtag Centre Court Netball. Thanks, everyone, for joining in on the conversation. But take a look at our poll results. So what's more important to you, SSN being the top league in the world or the strength of our national team? Now, this actually surprised me. 35 percent saying SSN and then 64, 65 percent saying the Diamonds. So the Diamonds is the clear winner here. And there was lots of conversation going on on socials about it. This tweet really stood out to me from Megan, who we know is always loving her netball and joining in with us on this show. So she, I thought this point was interesting. SSN for her at the best resource country in world netball, it's easy for us to make Diamonds the best team in the world and not worry about anything else. But for the growth of the game, domestically and internationally, we need a strong flagship competition. Bryce, what were your thoughts on the poll results? It definitely shocked me, V. And to be honest, I, the poll would have been less if I didn't vote because I put SSN. I just <laughs> wanted to see what the vote was before I came in. And we had about 500 people vote as well. So Which it wasn't all, like it was yeah. a small number. And it's awesome. And I love that people... Uh, I'm really excited about international but for me I'm still big on SSN because I think the better our league is then the better the international competition is the better the diamonds is my point still stands and probably something that we can ask Kelly is when are we going to add more teams because that's the only way we're going to see more Australian players and I think we need to be bold and we need the SSN I'm going to go against the poll again but I do think the SSN league needs to be strong to make our diamonds even stronger but the people have spoken B and the diamonds Oh, well, they stand out. Absolutely, they do. And I, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to talk to Kelly about because it is a hard thing to try and have both operating at the highest level, to have SSN as the best netball league in the world and also then be prioritising the Diamonds. I'd love to know how she thinks she can make that work because she came out in a press conference yesterday and was speaking about how the, the Diamonds are her number one priority and how do you do that and SSN... We will soon find out. It's going to be a very interesting conversation. <laughs> I know. Well, let's get to our first thing, and that is to the agenda. Thanks to TAC, make safety features a priority in your next car. Visit howsafeisyourcar.com.au. Now, as promised, we have our very first special guest in the studio with us. She is the brand new Netball Australia CEO, Kelly Ryan. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. Now... Hang on a minute. You've been in the job less than 48 hours already. Yep, correct. Yes. <laughs> so you've had a background working in AFL, yes. so Western Bulldogs, Gold Coast Suns. Yep. You've been at Marvel Stadium yep. most recently and finished that job Tuesday night. Correct. And then Netball Wednesday. Absolutely. What a ride. Wouldn't do it any other way. <laughs> so Did you have a background in netball before applying for the position? Not, not specifically. I mean, I grew up playing the game, as you hear now so many stories of people that actually do that, and that's been one of the great parts is just actually hearing so many stories and how netball actually connects with so many people. So I grew up playing it. Um, Would I, you be a quick centre? Yes. Yeah, yes, mid -court. I can imagine. Yeah, mid yeah, yeah. I, I, I was a centre. Uh, I don't know if I was any good at it, but I ran around a lot. And I guess, you know, that was one of the advantages. Um, but, yeah, I grew up in a town of 400 people. So it's a small country town where the girls play netball, the boys play football. Yeah. And that's just the way it was, it was set. So that's what I did every Saturday and then at school and every opportunity to play netball I, I did growing up. So... That's, that's as much as my background in netball goes. So I do not profess to be an expert on the court 
by any stretch. <laughs> we should get her to try it out for sure. <laughs> but why netball? Why the move? You've obviously gone from the AFL, you've gone from to yep. Marvel, and now back to netball, which you said you loved. But why? Why now? For me, it it felt like a really good time. I think for me professionally, I felt like I had spent a lot of years actually just trying to groom and 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 hone my craft, if you like. So, it's really. Um, quite a, a confronting thing to step out and, and take on your first CEO role because all of a sudden you go from one of many to, to one yeah. that's certainly under the spotlight. So I've been really methodical in the way I've, I've tried to shape my career and establish extra elements around the leadership space and investing some good time in that. And then when I saw this opportunity, it wasn't for me, it was my first CEO role wasn't just about doing anything. It had to be doing something that I really felt like had a really good purpose. And I feel like Nepal's really authentic and genuine mm. and it's just got such a great grounding that for me, I feel like I can spring from there and, and really try and help maximise not only the passion that comes with it, but obviously the business expertise that I think is still really important to, to grow the sport. Yeah. And what has the first 48 hours looked like? What, what have you got stuck into? What meetings have you had to have? You know, I'm sure it's been information overload for you. Yeah, there's, I've been stepping into it slowly for the last month since the announcement. Uh, we had an interim CEO in, in Ron, who's been doing a fantastic mm -hmm. job just trying to keep the ship sailing, if you like. Um, so I've, I've certainly spent a fair bit of time with him trying to start getting my knowledge up to speed and getting that handover for him. But yesterday was really just all about people. So it was connecting directly with the executive team, um, having a first staff meeting, albeit on Zoom. So, um, you know, that's that's obviously different, but almost expected in this, in this day and age. And really just trying to understand what people's journey has been themselves to, to get to netball and why netball for them. Um, and a large part of what I'm really trying to achieve is just how I can get the best out of the, the people that, that exist yeah. in netball. So I've been focusing a little bit internally um, and then the next part is really getting external and, and starting to meet our teams and our states and, you know, all the government relationships and, and whatever that are going to be really critical to, to how we grow the sport. Yeah, well, just so you know, Ron has been great for us. I know when we were interstate, like the fact that he would get on a Zoom call just to talk to us. And, yep, great. and you know, probably a lot of people didn't see Ron like in the media, but he was yep. definitely talking to us all the time, So, um, which is great. Yep. Um, but from an outside looking in before you took the job, was there one thing that you thought this is one big opportunity that Netball could do and you thought you could impact? Well, for me, I've, I feel like Netball needs to have more presence. You know, I, I feel like it actually just needs to to stop being just another sport that exists and be the sport. And it, it is the dominant sport for women and girls. And, you know, that's a really incredible feature and attribute, especially at a time where women's sport is spoken about more than ever before. Yes. You know, we really need netball to be a constant part of that conversation. And I think it's brilliant that at least people are now talking about it, but it's like, how does netball actually now start owning this space mm. um, in its own right? So. I think for me, there, there's really great opportunity there um, and great opportunity just to find other ways to, to move someone that loves the game from a playing point of view to watching it on telly, mm. to consuming it digitally, to telling the stories of, of the amazing people that sit around netball. You know, I think there's just some really great opportunity to, to further evolve that. Yeah, and it's so, like, it's a big thing. And one thing I didn't realise is there is such a massive gap from, like, Saturday netball. Um, to the SSN and not in like reaching that target but like my wife Brooke plays netball and I was going to the to the watch the Saturday netball like and she'd coached from the under 12s she'd coach the women's yeah something to, I don't like the lower division and she played <laughs> in division one and I was the captain of fever and I could walk around all day and no one would have any idea who I was <laughs> and if you had that with football yeah. you would never have a Scott Pendlebury walking around not knowing and I think that's the biggest thing for me is like where how do we bring these young girls and women yeah. to the game and realise that one it's great to watch but also like this could be a goal for them this could be their, their job when they grow up. Absolutely and that's the real thing it actually is a real job yeah. you know and that's something I think is incredibly important and we just need to continue to grow is that you know I, I know some of the players need to continue to supplement their income but you know, it is. A, it can actually be a job, which mm. you know, not all the other sports can offer that opportunity. So it's it's huge, and we need to take advantage of that. And we need to tell your story, and everybody else's more. So the girls that are running around on a Saturday morning can actually physically see the pathway that could potentially exist for them. In the recent weeks, we've seen a lot of controversy around the West Coast Fever Melbourne Vixens game yeah. that got 
cancelled, rescheduled, and there was obviously a big blow up on social media. Yeah. And, you know, we on Centre Court here, we always like to make sure we're looking at Twitter and making sure we're keeping up with the conversation, especially from the fans' point of view. Yeah. I mean, obviously you weren't in the job, but I'm sure you were keeping touch of what was going on. Yeah. Um, for you, what did you make of that? And are you one that, you know, all media is good for the sport? Or did you want to go out there and be able to talk about it and talk what was happening behind the scenes, but you weren't in the role yet to be able to do that? Yeah, my knowledge is, is really shallow on that because I was literally just sitting on the periphery not having the detailed, you know, me yeah. I wasn't a part of the detailed meetings or anything that, that was going on, but I was just trying to glean some of the key moments that were going on. I think, first and foremost, we are, we are just dealing with just such incredible pressure at the mm. moment and the amount of work that I know internally the team are doing along with the states and the teams is absolutely extraordinary. And I think you've got to expect that not everything is going to be delivered 100% perfectly. And, you know, I reckon if everybody sat back and had the opportunity to look at hindsight, they go, maybe we'd do that differently. Yeah. Maybe we'd do that differently. But in the heat of the moment where you're just literally trying to keep the wheels turning, some of those decisions, you know, just unfold. Um, but, yeah, um, all media, yes, all media is great media. But I think one of the advantages of netball is that, you know, we actually offer a lot of positivity in the media. And, mm. you know, so when these little things pop up, it's like, oh, hang on a minute, is this yeah. a really big controversy? In the scheme of things, it's not really a big yeah. controversy. But <laughs> yes. because we don't have many... It just seems like, well, it is a controversy, yeah. so let's talk about it. And, and are you like, do you imagine yourself being a CEO that is happy to come and talk about these issues publicly? 100%, absolutely. I think if we don't have the benefit of providing full context before a decision is made because things are moving quickly, then absolutely we need to make ourselves available to come back and say, well, I appreciate the sentiment, here's the reason why, and some people will continue to have their view of, yeah, you know, of whatever course. their view is and that's completely acceptable but we do absolutely want to be incredibly honest and transparent with any decisions that 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 is that is made that again everything is is really put through the lens of what is for the benefit of the sport um, and some decisions will be popular and some won't be um, and you know that's part of being a leader we've got to be it? okay with that <laughs> yes, you know we exactly. actually have to be okay with that because the this the essence of it will be from the greater good mm. of, of the sport well, you've just made Bianca's day, I think, <laughs> off, off our last show. That's exactly what Bianca wanted to hear. So you're pretty happy now. I am very happy. Um, so netball is a pretty, pretty traditional sport, but I feel like sometimes that holds us back in probably moving forward and, and finding bigger and better opportunities. Um, being a dual code athlete, I find that there's a lot of ways netball could do things differently, but I guess we're either too afraid because it's different yeah. but I think a lot of the things that we hear is well this is just the netball way or oh it's money it's and like it's kind of, it's for me it's getting tiring yeah. is there like for you I feel like you've come from all these you come from footy you've come from marvel you're going to have all these big ideas I feel like you're going to be faced with yeah. these kind of things how do yeah. you think you're going to combat that yeah it, it will no doubt be a challenge at times and I think you know for me I've got to have a really good appreciation for the decisions in the past and, and deal with the facts of what it is that we have we actually do have to deal with as, as realities. But, you know, we're not going to achieve everything straight away and I think we have to probably reset what our vision is and what the strategy is to then achieve that vision and that will come in time. We've got some really significant markers on the horizon around the World Cup and our 100-year you know, anniversary. So there's some really good things I think we can actually achieve along the way. So if everyone can be a little bit patient, allow us to develop that strategy but not make excuses. But the one thing we want to do is make sure that when we do something, we want to actually do it well and we don't want to spread ourselves so thin that we end up back in those conversations that we don't have time, we don't have money, we don't have mm. the resources. We do have to get out of that mindset and, again, picture ourselves and imagine ourselves as, as a really big player in sport. Uh, no doubt you would also know the conversation around should SSN be the best competition in the world or yeah. should we be putting all of our time and energy into making sure the Australian Diamonds are winning the Commonwealth Games and the World Champs and back on top? Yep. Um, or is there a way that you can balance both and try and keep growing both sides of our you know, game? Because, I mean, both... We put up a poll actually on our Twitter and it was really interesting. I think 35% said... SSN being number one league is the most important and yeah. then 65% said the Diamonds. So yeah. the fans are out there, you know, they back the Diamonds in as well. How, yeah. how do you handle that conversation and how do you see or what's your vision for both in the future? Look, I'd like to think we can do both really well mm. um, and they both have completely different objectives, I think. I think you've got the SSN, which I think is a great product yeah. that actually 
enables us to talk to a new audience. And I think that's got to be really important to the overall growth of netball, that we're not just talking to netballers, but we have a product that other people would happily consume. And then the Diamonds might talk more specifically to a traditional netball audience, so, so that's OK as well. Um, but both, you know, I think can be high performing and I think both can be the best. Um, and that, again, will probably come down to the, the people that we put around both of those programs and not expect that, you know, one's going to take from the other, but how we actually resource them properly and give them both, you know, the justice that they deserve so they can both be equally successful because they do have pretty different roles they can mm. potentially play for us. Yeah, I love that answer because I'm big on getting the SSN, the best league in the world. I already think it is, it but is, I think yeah. it could be better. And, <laughs> yep. Um, but for me, I think like we've talked about it so much on this show is the rule changes between SSN yeah. and international level. Yeah. How do you find that <laughs> yeah. with the super shot? Do you like the super shot? <laughs> I do. Yes. I actually do. And, you know, and it played out last week, you I know, in it. terms yeah. of a prime example of how it can actually, you know, flip a game. And, mm. you know, again, it's that sentiment and that excitement that if you're going to attract a new audience, you've you've got to try things that are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so I am I am actually a fan of, of the super shot. And um, I actually think everyone is a fan, Bianca. I know people say they're not. Down, I think that. But yeah. when you are on the court... <laughs> Watch out, our Twitter friend. <laughs> I know, Twitter. I'm probably going to get hated on this week. But when you're on the court and someone shoots a two-pointer, you cannot hear anything yeah. else except for the crowd. The crowd erupts and it is one of the most amazing feelings. I wish I was able to take the shot because... It, it's not, it doesn't just flip the game, but it brings the crowd into it. And I know two weeks ago when he played the Lightning, only one super shot was scored. And at that, that was the moment of the game where Lightning took it off us. Yeah. And it wasn't because one team was better, because I felt like we we're both on par that day, but it was because their home crowd got involved. And so I'm a, I think yeah. the super shot has to say because the yeah. crowd get into it. <laughs> yeah. But... So you're obviously a fan of that. Are you yeah. a fan of the timeouts and having a lot more different rules than um, the international? Yeah, I think the, think the core is still netball still has to be netball. And I think as long as it stays true to, to the fundamentals of it, I think it, it, you know, we should continue to explore other ways to evolve it. And, you know, whether timeouts, you know, stay this time and, and move on next time, who knows how it will actually evolve. But, yeah, let's throw it all out there and let's have a really good go because, again, we, we've... we've just got to continue to find ways that the sport is attractive to, to someone that is happy to watch it on an app, to you know watch it on TV, to just consume snippets of it, um, you know through social channels, and, and those elements al allow you and kind of enable that to actually happen a little bit more. And have you been able to have conversations with the Diamonds coach Stacey Marinkovic um, yet? And yes. if so, because I know you know one of the feedback we always get to is around you know the Australian pathways and being able to develop yeah. the Australian talent. And Ash is a big one for having more teams in the SSN to have yeah. more Australian players. So yeah, I'll put okay. that out there for you. <laughs> Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about any of that. That's what Ash needs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you do you talk to Stacey about that and how you can support her in developing the next lot of Australian? Diamonds coming through? Yeah, I, I have had a very preliminary conversation with Stacey when I first took on the role, to really just to introduce myself and to give her a bit of an insight as to, you know, what I'm about and that I'm here to support her. And I think that, you know, she really is, is the best in the business. So um, I think, you know, she has all the hallmarks of, of getting us to be really successful again um, from a national level. Uh, she needs time to get into the role and actually fully absorb it before I think she can really understand what it is some of her key challenges might be. Um, and then really the rest of our role is just to try and, and help her on that journey. And if that means, you know, changing pathways or investing further in, in aspects to, again, make sure that we can retain our number one status and, and win back all the cups and all those really critical markers, then, you know, Stacey and, and, and Stacey West, who heads up the, the area as well, will all sit down and have that really good conversation because success is, you know, it helps feed the rest of the netball family. So that's what we're all trying to achieve ultimately. Mm. I've got a fun one because we're, okay. I love how serious it's been, but <laughs> I'm a bit, I like the fun side of it. I think we've all been excited to get to know who you are and I, like Bianca's really excited to see your face on TV more <laughs> than ever. But um, let us like just talk about yourself and yeah. a little bit of fun. Yep. Can you pick a public figure to describe your leadership, your passion and your sporting ability? Ooh. So like example, leadership. He's on the spot. This is big. Yeah, well, come on, V. This is a centre court show. It's got to be a little bit of fun. Leadership, Trump. It's a bit scary. Please don't be that. Is your passion like Eddie Maguire or sporting abilities like LeBron James? Oh, 
N definitely none of those. <laughs> um, definitely not Trump. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah, that's gee, that's a tough it one. Big questions. Gosh. I probably should have hit you up before the show. But I just wanted to like let's just <laughs> back to where we go. Fire. Leadership. Uh, look, there's. I don't think there's ever one great leader that you actually look to and go. Mm. I just want to be like them. I think the thing that I've always tried to do is, is take elements of everyone that I've ever worked with and anyone that I've I've ever seen, um, you know, and how they operate. And it's kind of like that's a good way to do that, or that's not a good way to do that. Yeah. So. I, and I, I don't think there's ever, there's just not one perfect leader, I don't think. And I don't, and I think if you spoke to someone that was deemed a leader, they would also say the same thing, that I'm not yeah. the perfect leader. And everyone, if everyone thought that I was, then, you know, that's probably not doing anyone, uh, a, a, you know, a justice. So, I don't know, elements of everyone, I think, you know, I, I have to kind of take the good with the bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, probably wouldn't model myself too much on too many politicians, albeit yeah. they have, <laughs> they do have incredibly big challenges. So, um, what about mentors um, that you might have? Do you have some mentors yeah. that have kind of guided you and helped you with your leadership? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of people sitting in in the background, and I think that that is incredibly important for yes. anybody, regardless of of what it is that you're trying to achieve. That you actually have a really diverse set of people that can sit around you and. Um, the way that you know, I was told to look at it is like kind of have your board table and yep. put people in all the roles around you. Be it um, you know someone that is a great leader that's been a CEO, someone that's you know from a HR perspective, someone that's from a finance perspective. Like mm. build your own board table. Mm. So that's kind of how I've looked at it. So I have people that kind of sit in those, and I haven't actually formally anointed them and said <laughs> yeah. you are at my board table and, and this is your role for me um, but I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people mm. just to be able to get different perspectives and 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 so many people have been incredibly generous with their time of me especially through this process which yeah. you know required not just me to be at the front of this but obviously support of a lot of people as well and um, and I've certainly taken a lot from the conversations that I've had even leading to this point. Yeah, and will we be seeing you at the netball on the weekend in Melbourne? Absolutely, yes. I'll be at both games this weekend, so it's just great to have sport back um, in this state in particular. Um, great to have community sport back as well, albeit I know some of it's on a slight break because of school holidays again. Um, but, yeah, I can't wait to just visit not only, obviously, the games this weekend, but all the other states as well and seeing how everybody does it, you know, and I'm sure everybody does it a little bit differently, but it's... Um, It'll be fun to watch. That, thank you so much for joining us, Kelly. I'm sure everyone has just loved hearing from you, hearing your vision, your thoughts, and please know that you're welcome back on Centre Court whenever you want to come yeah, in. I mean, fabulous. make it weekly if you like, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you've got any of the hard issues. Just come in and yeah, come in announce it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but we do really appreciate you coming in. Thank um, you. And all the best for the new role. It's thank really exciting so for netball to see what you can do with the sport and also how much you can grow it because we're all here. We love the sport already and we just want to see it keep blossoming because we've got so much out of it already. Braz, you're still playing, but, yeah, what a game it is and the people that are involved in the sport. That was the agenda all thanks to TAC. How safe is your car? It's time for the nitty-gritty. All thanks to Lexus of Berwick, your hybrid destination of choice. Visit lexusofberwick.com.au. OK, we've had one special guest already today and we promised you that there would be a second one. And Sharon Finn and white one of the only two Indigenous players to play for the Australian Diamonds, is joining us to talk about all the incredible things she is doing. It's also NAIDOC week, so I think it's important that we celebrate NAIDOC week and talk about all the incredible Indigenous athletes who are absolutely dominating right now and we saw Patty Mills last night named the flag bearer one of the flag bearers for the Australian Olympic team for the Tokyo Olympics we know Ash Barty is doing an incredible job and we also know a, a tall a very very tall indigenous netballer Danelle Wellham has been doing really well over in the Super League in the UK too there's so much going on so much to celebrate Sharon thank you so much for joining us on Centre Court my pleasure, Bianca. Thanks for the invitation to join you both. I wanted to talk to you first about the Indigenous Diamonds Pathway Program. Can you give us a bit of a background, what that's about, what you're trying to do? Um, because it sounds like it's a fantastic initiative. Yeah, well, I mean, for those that know me and I guess my um, journey over the past 20 years as a netballer and um, Indigenous, I guess, role model, um, it's been one of my passions to, I guess, give back to the community and to um, pass on the knowledge that I've 
you know, gained as, a, as an elite athlete and as a Diamonds player. So um, I did start up a, a number of programs in the past, but they haven't really been supported. So, um, so this program is something that's really close to my heart. Um, and, you know, we're really excited to announce the program. Um, it's the first of its kind for our sport, I think, and it's going to involve specialised coaching and mentoring and leadership opportunities for Indigenous athletes um, who are aspiring to reach their full potential in netball or you know, have a goal of becoming a diamond and, and a professional netball athlete, which is now, you can become that in this day and age. Um, you can be paid to play the sport. So our first initiative through our Diamonds Pathway Program, um, which we're currently fundraising for, so that's to establish an all Indigenous netball team. And that will compete uh, in the state league competition here in, uh, sorry, state league Premier League competition um, here in Townsville, which is where I'm based. Um, and our aim is to work with the athletes to develop their on and off court skills. We want to empower them to be elite athletes and leaders and role models for their community um, and to be really resilient, you know, to overcome some of the barriers that in the past have prevented them from progressing through the pathway. So, you know, I'll be there with the players every step of the way to share my experiences and knowledge um, as an elite athlete and also as an Indigenous person. So, you know, we want them to see that no matter what their challenges or barriers that they if they have the right support um, and the right people in their corner, they can achieve anything. Um, Sharon, congratulations in starting up this pathway. It just sounds incredible. But I want to ask you a question about what was it like, one, playing for Australia and how much has netball changed um, from when you retired in 2000 to now? Because we did see you um, commentating last year. You got to see it firsthand what it was like, SSN. Has it changed much? Look, um I would say yes, a lot, because, you know, as I mentioned, the girls are paid now to play. And, you know, back in my day, we um, really didn't get much money to play the sport. And, you know, and I know these girls play because they love it, but they're also being uh, deservedly rewarded for the hard work and, um, you know, effort that they put in as an elite athlete. So it certainly has changed. And I've also noticed the change in just the athleticism of the players as well. Mm. I think the technology has increased and improved a lot over the last 20 years and and athletes, you know, to see some of these athletes stick it out for 60 minutes and especially, you know, the centre court players like Kim Rav and that, that just don't look like they tire at all. And, you know, it has to be put down to the amount of um, training um, technology that, that they're being put through um, today. So I think it's changed quite a lot, actually. And I think it's about time that our elite players are acknowledged and are starting to earn some money. And so what did your pathway look like? Was it, um, did you come across any challenges? Was it easy? Um, what was it like for you? Well, I mean, look, I think my challenges were probably um, similar to a lot of um, Diamonds players. I think the only difference for me was, you know, being an Indigenous athlete, I had um, a lot of extra, I guess, um, responsibilities to my community and to my people. Um, which put a lot of pressure on me as well um, to fulfil all those obligations and to be that go-to person for everything Indigenous. And for me, you know, um, I think people think that because you're Indigenous, you know everything there is to know about our culture and, and that's just not the way that I was brought up. Um, so my mum was part of the solar generation. So, you know, culture wasn't really talked about in our household. So for me, it was a really a real learning experience. When I first started playing netball as a young player, um, when I first started my pathway in the under nines, um, you know, I was I was Sharon Finn and the, the netballer that had some talent. It was when I became a diamond was when um, people started to acknowledge my um, Indigenous heritage. And, um, and I think that for me was when I was finally able to, I guess, um, embrace my Aboriginal heritage and feel really proud of it because up until that point, it wasn't really spoken about. Sharon, I wanted to talk to you about last year. It was a, probably a pivotal moment, I think, for Netball Australia when they came out and made their declaration of commitment last year. What did that mean to you? Um, well, look, firstly, the whole incident um, of Gemma not getting on the court during Indigenous round for me was, and I know a lot of other Indigenous people and particularly her family, was really disappointing. I think... Um, Indigenous Round is a really great thing, um, but I think we need to look at what Indigenous Round means and, and mm. what what we should be acknowledging in, at Indigenous Round. And, and to be honest, I think that um, 
I think there needs to be more aspects of our culture embedded within netball, not just for one round per year. And I totally think agree. I'm saying that, yeah. and I really love that I've seen. Um, I think it might be the Giants uniform that they play in every week has a lovely Indigenous design on the back of their dress. And forgive me if I've forgotten any other of the um, SSN clubs that have that as well. But you know, we see that week in, week out. They're, they're bringing that culture to the court. So. Um, yeah, look, I think I, I'm really, um, I guess there's a silver lining in what happened for Gemma. It's just unfortunate that she had to cop the brunt of it. But um, And it's not something that netball has not been aware of in the past. You know, the, uh, since I retired, I spent, I've spent pretty much all of my time devoted to developing programs for Indigenous girls and pathways and supporting and mentoring um, Indigenous players. Um, and introducing the sport to girls in remote communities who have never really tried netball before. So um, it's just now because of that incident that, you know, the pressure's on netball to do something about it. Um, although it wasn't the, the right way to go about it, I think it's to look on the positive side. It's great now that we have this declaration of commitment from 20 um, peak body, netball bodies. And, you know, I, we're starting to see some good things happen. But I think until we embed... Um, policies and systems and processes within the netball system, things like Indigenous Round really aren't going to cut it. We need to actually have better systems within netball. Uh, I find it interesting that you were saying that you don't know too much about your culture and everyone expects you to know. And mm -hmm. I'm guilty of thinking that as well and, and probably asking too many questions that a lot of people probably don't know the answer to and this is probably where I struggle and, I, and I, I'm struggling probably saying it on air as well because you never know what the right question is, B. but I want to be proud of our culture and I'm not Indigenous but I want to be like, I want to be proud of it, I want to know the story where, and I want to know where the line is where I can say I'm an Australian, I want to be like, where is that line that we can cross with yeah. not insulting and... Because, you know, I've got a son now and I want to teach him the way where, what Australia was to begin with. Yeah. Um, so I, thank you for sharing, like, your story. and, and um, But, yeah, I, I'm still learning and I know you are as well. And I, I think the more we talk about it, the better it is. Um, yeah. But you have an interesting story behind the, your new creation um, of your social enterprise. Sh sorry, I'm going to say it wrong. Shrom Shroma. Shroma, Shroma. Shroma <laughs> Indigenous Corporation. Can you tell us about that? Um, yeah, it is a really interesting story, actually. Um, so when the um, incident with Indigenous Round happened um, at the Suncorp Super Netball last year with Gemma Mai Mai, where she didn't take the court, it really sparked a huge media frenzy and a lot of mm. angst, as we just discussed. So, um, so, so much so that one netball supporter contacted Liz Ellis and asked how she could be of assistance to address um, these issues and the underrepresentation of Indigenous players at the elite level. So Liz kindly introduced this person to me and that's how Sharoma Indigenous Corporation was created and also named after myself and Auntie Roma, Pregark, so <laughs> Sharoma, um, who is now my business colleague. So she has a background in academia, leadership and entrepreneurship and she's an experienced cultural knowledge giver. And after a long chat on the phone, we came to realise that we both share the same vision and passion and that is to create culturally safe pathways and more opportunities for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander players. Um, and support them to navigate their way through the pathway to the elite level. So we've also established a commercial arm of our enterprise, which we've named the Institute of Sport, Culture and Leadership, or ISCAL for short. Um, so we provide sport, culture and leadership services to small and large organisations, corporate entities, community groups and netball organisations. And we're currently doing some work with um, two of the member organisations in the Indigenous space and also with a netball association who's engaged me as a specialist coach to work with their academy athletes. So it's quite refreshing actually to be acknowledged not just as a former Indigenous athlete, but also as a diamond in my own right who can add value to programs uh, that are not specifically Indigenous related. Mm, absolutely, you can. And we know that you are raising money as well. Can you just let people know where they can help? We'll put it up on the screen because I know at the moment you're trying to raise $30,000 to cover things like equipment, to uniforms, competition fees, travel accommodation, coaching costs, venue hire, all of it, because it's not cheap to do what you are wanting to do. Um, so yes, how can people help you and support you? Yeah, that, that's right, Bianca. We are. We have set up a, um, a fundraising campaign 
um, and we're currently setting up all of our social media channels. However, we have two Facebook pages up and running for Sharoma Indigenous Corporation and also the Institute of Sport, Culture and Leadership. So we'd really appreciate if your viewers would like to share these pages and where possible donate to our Indigenous Diamonds Pathway Program and the program details and links to donate are on our Facebook pages. Uh, and we'll be sharing our journey with the team along the way. So we invite everyone to join us and join us on this journey by following our posts. And, um, you know, we understand that not everyone can donate. So any in-kind support would be appreciated. Um, and also we're open to partnering with other codes, industry leaders, or anyone who would like to work with us who have similar values and goals. Um, and now's a perfect opportunity to get on board with such a heightened awareness of the barriers affecting our Indigenous um, participation in our sport. So, um, and just before I finish, I just want to take the opportunity to thank all the wonderful people who have already kindly donated and you know, just know that your support will really help us to achieve these wonderful things for our Indigenous netballers. Absolutely, and we will be sharing all of that information across our social channels as well. And, and for anyone who, who might not be able to donate, just simply retweeting is a huge benefit yeah. to get the message out there, to showcase exactly what you're doing, Sharon. And, you know, we certainly here at Centre Court will be supporting you all the way that we can. Um, and also happy to hear more about it and we'll keep following the journey with you um, and have you back on the show because I'd love to hear more about it. And, and you can tell us about some of the up-and-coming players that we should be keeping an eye out on. Well, thanks, Bianca, and thanks, Ash. And, yeah, it's really great to um, have these platforms to be able to share and educate people uh, on what it is that we're trying to do. And it's, it's such a needed thing. And, and for me, as I said, having worked in this space for, you know, 20 years plus, it's... Um, and back then we didn't... You know, social media wasn't such a big a big deal back then. So now we have these platforms where we can actually share and educate people. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story today. No worries at all. And we hope to see you back on the commentary soon when the netball gets back up into Queensland. Thanks again, Sharon, for joining us. Thanks, ladies. Time to hand over to you, Bruzzy. Thanks to Sudox for Women Muscular and Joint Pain Relief Cream. That's S-O-O-D-O-X. Follow the instructions for use. Over to you. I don't even need a drum roll anymore because <laughs> my new sponsor, you have to spell it out. I am excited. I am pumped. And just watching you do that, that was the best thing I've ever I'm seen. I'm going to make you do it next week. No way. That was perfect. That was my drum roll. Get excited. Now, so much is happening in netball. There's so many good things. We've seen all of the teams quickly pack up and get to Melbourne quickly. Um, the Firebirds and Lightning were free to... I pretty much live like a Melbourne um, person, but the Giants, Giants and the, and the Swifts, Swifts, they had to and isolate. And Fever, isolated. Um, had to isolate for the two weeks. We've seen Liz Ellis jump online. Let's get these um, parents with kids, toys. So many people have jumped on, and not just toys, but there's been food delivered to them. There's yep. been so much. So there's so much going on, B. But there's one thing that I wanted to highlight and that is Kira Austin is travelling with the Giants. So as much as I'm talking about Kira Austin, I am also talking about the Giants. It's mainly for the Giants that they are supporting their injured athletes and having someone that has done their ACL and they're not just a two-week injury, it's not just an ankle sprain, this is a 12-month rehab program. The fact that they didn't leave her in Sydney, they brought her along, they've kept her with her physio, with her strength coach, with her team, that is massive and as an athlete that has recently done their ACL, knowing what it's like to be injured when you're around your team, you already feel like that you're not a part of the team and you have to really work hard to be a part of it. But to then be taken away from your team completely because they're now travelling around because of COVID, you really feel like, one, I felt like I retired and I questioned, I guess, a lot about do I want to keep playing? What is this? But now you've got a young kid who's done her ACL. She's still with her team. She's around them. She's I'm watching her social media, she's not just in the gym with them, she's on the park with them, she's cheering them, they're cheering her and I love that from the Giants, they seem like they've got a really good culture there and I love that and the fact that it's not just money here, like they've, they've said we're going to do this, we're going to support her, so well done to the Giants, I think that's unreal and I just want to talk about Kira Austin again, the way she's dealing with her um, ACL rehab, I think she's doing such a good job and I'm absolutely loving what she's putting out on social, so keep doing that. Well done, Giants. Well done, Kira. Um, Brazilian. With a new sponsor that B has to always do a drum roll to. So <laughs> shout out to you guys. Have you spoken to Kira? Are you into, is there an ACL club where you all chat about support and support each other in your rehab? That's actually a serious question. Like, do you get in touch with each other and help each other out? Um, well, I did 
Um, I do like her both. <laughs> no, but I, I do send her like the odd, um, just like looking awesome and killing it. And it's funny, I hate saying it, but there is an ACL club. It's the worst club to be a part of. You don't want to be a part of it, but I feel like you only understand it when you've done it. Um, and yeah, the fact that I'm watching her um, do her rehab live on Instagram, I think is great. And, and She's well above, like, ahead of where I was at that right. stage. So I think she's doing unreal. And, and, and great for young girls or, you know, anyone that's done their ACL to be able to watch that process oh, too and see 100%. the amount of effort she's putting in. No, and she's great. And not just, I guess, the way we're seeing her do her rehab, but she's just so happy yeah. like she's never down every time you talk to her she's like no everything's great we got to see her in Sydney when we were traveling because of COVID and she was always up and about always happy for a chat so yeah she's a beautiful person well that is awesome to hear that was Brazilian for another week and that was Senate Court for another week what a huge episode it has been thank you so much to Kelly Ryan the new Netball Australia CEO for coming in Sharon Finn and Wyatt for joining us as well and thank you for watching Senate Court all thanks to TAC Make safety features a priority in your next car. Visit howsafeisyourcar.com.au. We will see you next week.